the son of a former Orange County reality star, has been arrested on three counts of attempted murder. Who was the shooter? I don't know. All I know is a person named Josh. Josh Waring is accused of firing a 9 millimeter into a crowd at a home. The most powerful evidence in this case would be the eyewitness testimony of the people who were at the scene who knew Mr. Waring. But Waring tells Crime Watch Daily in a phone interview from jail he's been framed and the real gunman is being protected by police. Not only did I not fire a gun that night, I've never fired a gun. My first reaction is that the Costa Mesa Police Department don't like Josh. I, I'm going to tell you that. They, they don't like him because of his drug use. He has been a, more than a nuisance. He has been a nuisance. Now, I dissect the case from both sides. Orange County prosecutors. The evidence at this point points clearly to Mr. Waring. And those backing Josh Waring. How can you have an investigation that is so inadequate, it's ineffective, everything about it was wrong, it was biased? In the Josh Waring case, some facts just can't be disputed. An hour before the shooting, Joshua Waring and a passenger named Brian Goldstein drove to a local group home to return a friend's cell phone. But they were shouted away by an angry resident backed by a group of roommates. There's some anger towards Josh, which has never really been clarified. But prosecutors say Josh knew he was disliked at the home because he once threatened a woman who lived there. They did not want him around because he's accused of pulling a gun on one of the former residents. An hour after the scuffle ended, Waring and Goldstein returned to the very same home, but this time in separate cars. Waring in a borrowed white BMW, Goldstein in a blue Acura with two female passengers. Waring says he returned to the home by himself to look for the lost cell phone. I went back to the house and was in the street looking for her phone. I had a flashlight. Waring claims Goldstein arrived after him. Goldstein rolls up. He has a loud muffler. He has his music running. It's like he's looking for an altercation. That's, that's the impression I got. Waring's defenders say it was Goldstein in the blue car who fired the weapon. Goldstein reaches out the left side of his car with his left hand and fires several shots. Even the victim told cops in several interviews the shots came from Goldstein's blue car. Who is the shooting group in the small car? What color is the small car? I went blue. Let me ask you this. Can you be positive? Positively sure, 100% fact sure, okay. it came from small cars. Joel Garson admits the victim, Danny Lopez, ultimately changed his story and is now suing Josh Waring for damages. But Garson is not deterred. I don't care what he says now because on three different occasions at or near the time that it happened, he said it was the blue car. Prosecutors contend injured victims under stress don't always remember events clearly and that the shooter was in fact Josh Waring in the white car. In this case, we have two witnesses who were not shot, who were shot at, um, who know Mr. Waring, who say Mr. Waring was the one who fired. And the gunshots came from the white BMW. I'm positive of that. The weapon used has never been found. But here's another twist. Even though the victim, Danny Lopez, initially pointed the finger at the blue car and Brian Goldstein, Lopez claims to have tangled with Josh Waring in the past, perhaps giving Waring a reason to retaliate. Do you know this Josh guy? Uh, I know him from the past, yeah. He put a gun out on me on. Um... About six months ago, he came up right now. Yeah, I got mad at him because he took my friend's money. Josh admits the incident did happen, but claims the gun wasn't real. It was an airsoft gun that did happen, and that's one of the hard parts, just because like I knew I'd have to face that, and everyone said just lie about it, just say it didn't happen, but I'm not going to do that. He had played with airsoft guns, and he's had a fake BB gun, so but nothing real. What about those two female passengers in Goldstein's car? The defense says, curiously, the women claim to have seen nothing. 
Prosecutors say the fact that Waring led cops on a high-speed chase after the shooting shows what's called a consciousness of guilt. Innocent people, when, when there's a traffic stop, when there's lights flashing behind him, will make a stop. The police are trying to stop Josh, and he defies them. Correct. Why? Because he had drugs on him, he's on parole, and he didn't want to go back to jail. He also knew that uh, a shooting had occurred because he was there and was afraid that he'd get uh, blamed for it. Prosecutors say they have physical evidence to support their eyewitness case against Waring. The forensic information shows that there's gun residue found in Mr. Waring's car. There's his DNA on the bullet casing, which is consistent with the bullets that were fired. But Garson says there was no gun residue found on Josh or his clothing, and that gun residue in the car was in the seat where Goldstein was sitting earlier in the day. Waring's attorney also believes by the time cops got around to investigating Goldstein's car, any evidence there was probably corrupted. They did not uh, search Goldstein. They didn't do gunshot residue testing on Goldstein. They didn't search his car for two days. Josh Waring also makes a stunning claim about Goldstein, that he's a government snitch being protected by police. It's true, Goldstein does have immunity in an unrelated murder case. However, the DA insists he's not on their payroll. But it begs some important questions. Why aren't prosecutors calling Goldstein in their case against Waring? We have all the witnesses, the forensic information, and Mr. Waring's actions to convict Mr. Waring. The defense claims they have audio of a jailhouse snitch who was locked up with Goldstein, saying Goldstein confessed to the shooting. He starts telling me the case. He was like telling me that, you know, he was in the dark car, that he actually did the shooting. He told me like where he went, how he got away, and what he did with the gun. The snitch has a long rap sheet and is now serving a life sentence in prison. But Waring's defense team wonders why Goldstein is pleading the fifth in Josh's case, raising the question, is it protection against self-incrimination? And why, according to the defense, did Goldstein switch license plates on the blue Acura after the shooting? And why did police make the following statements to Goldstein that night? So what's up, man? You tell me everything happened. Straight up? Straight up. They're hiding something about Goldstein. It's been the pattern throughout this entire case. Any police tactics that were used, um, that's a question for Costa Mesa police. This is Mr. Waring's manipulation to turn his 15 minutes of fame to get better treatment and special treatment. Waring claims jailers harass him, but prosecutors say he's a troublemaker, that his girlfriend once tried to smuggle black tar heroin to him. Prosecutors do have a quite serious issue to contend with. Waring claims sheriffs recorded his phone calls early on when he was acting as his own attorney. The DA is able to hear all of Josh's strategy. He had many conversations with his parents about what witnesses he was going to call and what he was saving for trial. And you're saying that's illegal? That is illegal. There's evidence that some calls were recorded, some calls were not while he was uh, representing himself. And we filed a motion to dismiss the case based on outrageous government conduct. We reached out to Costa Mesa police who declined our request for an interview because it's a pending case. Lori Peterson finds herself in that all too common parental trap, loving her son desperately, but powerless to help him. Are you blaming yourself? I don't blame myself because I'm not the one in that situation. Josh has dr battles with drugs and it's got to take that person to change themselves and to want to change. So it's Josh's fault for being even in that environment. Lori Peterson is still employing tough love, refusing to bail her son out while he awaits trial. But let me ask you something difficult here, Lori. So the, the challenges with a drug addict, they do things like steal and lie. Of course. So how do we believe him now when he says he didn't do it? I don't think we have to believe him. I think you have to look at the evidence. 
for an Orange County jury, the issue is not black or white, it's blue or white. How that jury sees it will dictate whether Josh Waring spends the rest of his life in prison. Is Josh going to take the stand? I think he will. And do you think he'll do well? I think he'll do very well. I think the truth says it all, and Josh is prepared to do the truth. Since our interviews, Waring went back to court and asked a judge to dismiss his current attorney and allow him to represent himself in his attempted murder case. The judge agreed, however, he warned him that prosecutors who have decades of legal experience would likely overmatch him, saying, quote, you're starting to tread into some deep and difficult waters. Both sides will be back in court next month. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.